Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Battlefield 4 hard difficulty walkthrough. We're on mission 5, this is the Kunlun Mountains. And tonight there's going to be a jailbreak. And it's happening right here. This is a really strange mission, this one, because at the beginning it seems like it wants you to stealth again in a game where stealth really doesn't work all that well. And don't get me wrong, I reckon you can probably get past the searchlights, I reckon you can probably get up into the tower and open the door, but even if you were to do all that, then the alarm would kick and people would know what's happening and you'd still have to fight, so it's kind of entirely up to you how this works. You can either go guns blazing now, or guns blazing later, and uh, I opt for what well, you just saw. Alarm just got hit then because I got spotted, so it's time to, to bomb forward and run up here, knifing these people and uh, getting guns. Just just be careful because that guy there has a shotgun and obviously shotguns hurt. But luckily enough for us, this difficulty really isn't as tough as it could have been and I'm just baffled by it, I really am. And it makes me hope that Ghosts is so hard, so sadistic, so insta-killable, you know, bad checkpointable, brutal that forums are flooded with with tears that would be awesome for me because that would mean that when I do make that guide it has value it has worth but I don't think it will be I think it's gonna be easier than Black Ops 2 and even if it's as hard as Modern Warfare 3 which is the last game that Infinity Ward made that wasn't that hard compared to Modern Warfare 1 so I just don't think in any universe COD Ghosts is gonna be difficult <laughs> and it's it's kinda sad like, one thing I like about Halo, and I always say I'm not a Halo guy, and I suppose it's a little bit misleading. I've played every single Halo game, except for Halo Wars, which, you know, that's a completely different type of game anyway. But to say that I'm not a Halo guy is, is, is to mean that I've never really got the buzz about Halo. You know, everything that it offered was something that I had already. Like, you'll notice that a lot of PC gamers will probably not understand why Halo was so iconic or important to a lot of people. Because they had Counter-Strike and Half-Life and all these other really pioneering games. So, the concept of, of what Halo did on consoles is nowhere near as grand as, as what PC already had. So to those people, they were just like, are these people fucking high? You know, they didn't see the allure. And I'm kind of in that same boat but for different reasons. The one thing Halo really had was it looked great at the time but I just I never liked it I just didn't but they were always hard you know the campaigns on Legendary were tough and don't get me wrong the the formula has not changed all that much since it started you know there's a very science heavy mechanic to the combat of Halo you've got your shield you know the enemies have got their shield you've got bullets that damage certain um, you know the physical nature of the enemy you've got energy that damages the shield of the enemies and there's a whole grenade modifiers and things there's a lot of things that work like the plasma pistol to the combo after the armor's gone to the headshots there's a lot of cool systems at play which turn that game into this methodical interesting first person shooter that's not even mentioning it's got some of the finest AI in in gaming really there's some really great AI at work there and on legendary don't get me wrong, Halo's got easier, guys. I'm not saying that, you know, Halo is not also victim to this this difficulty curve. Because Halo, the the original games were, were really, really quick. I mean, Halo 3 was really hard, and then ODST came out, and ODST was significantly easier. Even though your life worked a different way, and then Reach came out. A lot of people said Reach was tougher, but I didn't think it was it was that tricky at all. And then Halo 4 came out, which I don't think was that hard at all either. But Halo 3, those green insect things, I think they were called drones, that stripped you dead in seconds. The snipers in Halo 2, you remember them? One shot kills. None of that take your shield and then kill you. Laser accurate, insta death, cheesily hidden enemies. Just insane levels of difficulty. But Halo checkpoints quite frequently, which made it, you know, possible. And it was all about learning positioning. And Halo's maintained its difficulty even though it has got easier but in the grand scheme of things compared to Call of Duty Halo is much tougher much 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 tougher and 
I just I, I want ghosts to bring that toughness back but I don't think it will like this here I'm clipping behind this piece of cardboard shooting people with a, an SMG that's actually quite fun I've got a backup shotgun and there's a lot of guys and they're quite close and like that right there I would have died on an older version of this game just because I missed my first shot and it would have punished me you know but at the same time it also affords me to play in a different style like I would never be this gung-ho on a game where I die in two bullets you'd never see me shooting out in the middle of a corridor like this I'd be behind I'd be behind whatever I can literally squeeze my face into so only my eyelids can be seen you know I'd be playing mole the entire time and I'm really curious how game design is going to advance into the coming generation, this this new epoch of gaming. Because how do we continue to innovate and create new gameplay challenges on top of the ones we already have? Because now we've got better technology and now it's more a case of we're limited by the imagination rather than the hardware, which is a really cool position to be in. Like what replaces regenerating life, you know? If you look at the progression of, of how HP's been handled in first person shooters, there's been a, a bunch of natural jumps. In the beginning, you had a hundred points of life, or a face that squinted and looked around a little bit, and the more injured you got, the more bloody the face got. You know, in, in, in games like Doom and, and, and Quake, you utilised Shield, which was a separate statistic that covered your life up, so did Doom. You know, this whole shield and health and health item pickup notion was rampant in the early times of first person shooters and then they kind of pushed it a little bit past that they pushed it to the the med pack or the health canteen notion of you have those same you know 100 life bits as you did in the doom but now we're going to try and make them a little bit more contemporary by saying you need to go up to this wall and it will heal you rather than it just being an arbitrary number even though numbers were still used you know they moved towards this this canteen based healing this this healing item base some games kind of progressed from that and you got to the point where you could carry the healing items that restored your life and if you picked those up they were in in, in loo so that you could use them when you needed them but it were always staying around the same presets of a life bar and an armor bar a life or an armor. Way to protect the life, way to bring the life back, the same kind of notion. And I can't really remember any other different approaches on it until the regenerating life system came about. And now regenerating life is literally in everything. It became the easiest way to deliver difficulty and balance while still keeping the player in the game. Like right now, I'm shooting these guys, they're dying. That's awesome. You know, I'm not getting shot. I've got a really good piece of cover. I got shot just then. There's a nice little damage indicator on the screen. Nice little bit of blood spatter telling me that I'm injured. Giving me that feedback to tell me I'm in trouble. And then it's gone, which tells me I'm healed. So I can pop back up and start delivering some more bullets. A couple more tags, a little bit more blood. There's, you know, the regenerating thing is, is so ingrained now that little key elements of it like the when when the sound muffles or you can hear his breathing or, or the screen goes a different color like it desaturates or it goes red or it gets you know starts to blur and things all these these bits of information and these visual flares that give the player input are, are everywhere and I'm really curious what comes next when do we drop regenerating life like we dropped canteens like we dropped shield shards things like that when does that happen and what replaces it because I really just I don't know what could because it's such a fundamental thing you are alive you have some kind of mitigating factor which keeps you alive and when that factor has been checked you die how do you make that interesting and how do you make it fun and I've mentioned this before this little tangent because I it's it's a it's a good one and it's it's also an interesting one because I don't have an answer for it. But like Duke Nukem, I hate to bring it up because it's a terrible game. Not the original ones. The original ones were good. Some of the third person ones were okay, like A Time to Kill and, and Zero Arrow. But the most recent one, fucking terrible, bad game. But it had a really interesting idea in it where 
when you injured enemies, they would crouch down into a submissive posture where you could execute them. Executions are nothing new, we've seen them before. But they brought your life back. So there was this really interesting notion of, you know, dealing damage to enemies and, and, and taking risks could help you get your life back. Which is going to swim me back around to my original tangent on, on Halo. Now, this sequence here, guys, once you get to this door, it pretty much tells you that you're going to have to stand your ground for a while. Every single time a moment like this comes up in a game, I know it's coming and I always fear it. I'm always fearful of the challenge because I remember the times where you've had to do this in the past and you got so swamped by enemies that it was just bullshit and luck that got you through. You know, a million grenades didn't land at your feet that particular second so you could throw them all back or you didn't get flanked by the guy you never heard and he insta-killed you with a punch. You know, how many times have you been, especially Call of Duty 2, was it Hill 9 something something where you just go to those bunkers and like back, stand in your ground? Just terrifying moments of, of regenerating life and, and dancing on the line of death. But this is moments easy. This is nowhere near as intense or as rough as any of those from previous memory. In fact, these people die before it even really gets going, considering how big this le this level is, this particular room. And I get a really sweet headshot with the thumper, or whatever the hell this thing's called, this crazy grenade launcher, which I, won't, I wasn't expecting, but I did enjoy it. But to bring us full circle, I said that Halo was a very difficult game on its hardest difficulty because they managed to keep the difficulty as they progressed through the series. They've also got the skulls, which are a modifier. One of them affects your life, one of them is called Black Eye, which means you only receive regeneration when you beat people up with your punch, which is this risk-reward system of getting your life back. That's a kind of interesting system for governing life, but I always hated it. <laughs> Absolutely hated using. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, black eye. It's black eye. I'm thinking iron is the one where you don't get checkpoints. That one is terrible. Fucking hate that one too. But they had a way that you could add the difficulty with the skulls. And I always thought that that was a cool idea. My only criticism of it is after its initial use and its initial, you know, reveal, they never enhanced it. They never built on a system that I thought was fascinating and interesting. Like, why can't we design our own skulls? build your own challenge you know, if they really took it to town they could make some super interesting ones and I think they'd surprise themselves at just how creative they could get and they could make that formula because Halo especially with how formulaic it is and how enemies behave could be really interesting like uh, if anybody played Time Splitters uh, I'm speaking more of Time Splitters 2 not the, the original on the Playstation 2 I played Time Splitters 2 on the GameCube it was a fantastic game that is one of the hardest games I've ever played. In fact, I look back to that game and I still think I'd struggle now because of the way that it was handled. They, they were challenging games and they allowed you to design your own level. There was a map editor that you could make. And I always like to dabble with it and play with it. And I'm surprised we don't have something like that in, in future games. And not just necessarily first person shooters, in any kind of game. Because what that allowed you to do, folks, is it allowed you to structure a mission. So you could build the geometry, design the geometry of your level, design what was in it, filling it with items and so on, and you could do the scripting and the events for to trigger things, so you had to find a keycard to open a door to get to a certain area. And you could put cameras in, you could put guards in, you could put enemies in and things. You could put a lot of really, really cool stuff. And This is years ago, this, guys, and we've never really had that level of customization in anything except for like your firefights or your custom games there's never been you know build your own custom game or custom level or it seems to have taken a back seat to a lot like boss rush where did boss rush go it was all the rage and now we've got this you know survival wave based nonsense you know thanks to gears 2 which released hard to the masses which was fantastic at the time but now it's gained you know, like everything else, and it's been played out. But thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you in part two. So you take care now.